In an era in which we are questioning the effectiveness of markets in producing the kind of society and economy we want to live in, it is more important than ever to have an objective debate about the role that markets and the state play in the economy. Is the state necessary only to correct market failures, or is it also needed to more actively shape and create markets and technological opportunities, and to promote growth which is not only smart, but also inclusive? Uh, notion of how an economy works is that there's a bunch of markets that allocate resources and when they don't do this well it's uh, because there are imperfections in the markets or frictions in allowing the market to allocate resources and when you don't like the outcomes you have market failures and that's the dominant paradigm and then you can have debate between conservative and liberal economists about whether the state should intervene or not intervene to fix market failures to get rid of market imperfections and it can go on endlessly it's the wrong way to think about the economy. So the way that I approach this is by going back to one of the first things, at least when I studied economics, I was told, and I think it's, it's in all the textbooks still, is that there are three types of ac economic actors in the economy. Uh, there are uh, governments, households, and businesses. And then somehow from there, you get, up, you get to this theory of the market economy. Well, first of all, so what are governments, households, and businesses? They're not individuals, they're not markets, they're organizations. Okay? And what do they do to make an economy successful? Uh, they don't just consume and, and pr produce and save. They invest in productive capabilities. So if you want to go back to Adam Smith's original question about the, the, the wealth of nations, uh, what's the source of the wealth of nations? It's investment in productive capabilities, and it's organizations to do that, uh, not markets. And uh, governments invest in infrastructure, the knowledge base. We all know that you can't have a successful economy if the government hasn't invested in the education system. You can't leave that to businesses. You can't leave that to households. Uh, we all know that uh, uh, businesses have to invest in productive capabilities, or if you don't know that, we should know that, that uh, they have to differentiate themselves from other companies by investing in superior capabilities, um, and that households, well, what do they do? Well, sure, they consume and they produce, but they also do something very, very fundamental. They invest in the labor force of the future, never mind sustaining the labor force of the present. And that's no mean feat. That often takes at least 18 years these days, and probably 22 years more, that a household has to basically support the development of these productive capabilities. Um, so you put this all together, and then what you really need to understand the wealth of nations is how governments, businesses and households interact in developing productive capabilities. Okay. Now, within that framework, you then say, what role do markets play vis-a-vis -vis these organizations? Well, markets are very important, uh, first of all, because from an individual point of view, we would not want to live in an economy that didn't have well-developed markets, because they allow us to change jobs, uh, they allow us to uh, uh, borrow money and start businesses. They allow us to choose whether we want to buy apples or oranges or houses or cars and all kinds of things. And this is progress. Uh, no one wants to get rid of an economy with well-functioning markets. But what makes those markets possible is investment in productive capabilities. And it's not just by businesses, but it's by businesses, households, and government. And then we need an analysis which looks at historically how this is done, and we see that there's different relationships among governments, households, and businesses in developing productive and investing in productive capabilities. But we do find some general patterns. We see that there are things like roads, uh, things like schools, things like uh, science and technology, basic research, where if the government is, isn't involved, uh, the other actors are unable or unwilling to do it. Uh, we see at the same time that uh, it's very important that uh, households have the wherewithal to invest in the labor force, but 
they can't do it unless they have some income and probably a steady income uh, to bring up children to get their schooling. It's not the only reason they do this is to develop so that their children can work, but that's the economic function is so that uh, from generation to generation you have people who can be productive in society. And to do that at any point in time, you need, you need uh, employment and you need employment uh, over time. Now, uh, using the case of the U.S. economy, 83% of that employment comes from businesses. Okay, so the government can only so, do so much if businesses aren't creating that employment or that stable employment. Um, on the other hand, for businesses to create stable, long-term jobs, particularly in a high-wage economy and be productive, it needs the government to be there persistently to develop in this physical infrastructure, the knowledge base that none of these businesses, even the most powerful business in the world, won't invest in. So you need all these actors working together. I called them, started calling them an investment triad. Uh, and uh, how they work together, uh, how the income is distributed, how the burden of investing in productive capabilities uh, uh, is uh, distributed across these actors is, is, is of a tremendous importance uh, for a, a society that may or may not be successful or determine whether it is or not, is not successful. Um, and uh, so we have to get away then from just saying that it's a market economy to saying what determines successful organizations and then recognizing that successful organizations then make well-developed labor markets, well-developed capital markets, well-developed product markets uh, possible. The last part of this argument is that once you recognize that uh, markets are the outcomes much more than the causes, that organizations that are, uh, involve relations among people, long-term investment, uh, are very different than markets, and uh, again, I've given you the notion of the investment triad, uh, you then have to recognize the fact that if markets start dominating these organizations, they might undermine their ability to work. Now, it's not, not markets working autonomously that do this. There is a relationship between markets and organizations. And basically, when you dig beneath the surface, there's, uh, what's happening is that some individuals have captured uh, organizations, whether it's the government uh, or whether it's, it's businesses. Households usually are too fragmented and small to matter. Uh, and make use of the markets in order to take a lot of rewards from themselves that they didn't create. And they, particularly this is true of financial markets. And this is why we need to have a, a lot of research on how financial markets work to either support or undermine uh, 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 an equitable and stable economy.